One of the most memed things in Yu-Gi-Oh! is the ridiculous concepts they've run in order to continue talking about a world where people play card games for a living. First, it's an adaptation of an actual ancient Egyptian ritual. Then in GX, we get Dual Academy, which is literally Harry Potter or X-Men, except instead of having some kind of special magical skill, they play card games. And then there's 5Ds, where they- CARD GAMES ON MOTORCYCLES! CARD GAMES ON MOTORCYCLES! CARD GAMES ON MOTORCYCLES! CARD GAME ON MOTORCYCLE! Yes, they ride motorcycles and play card games at the same time. But even more absurd is that there exists a Yu-Gi-Oh! racing video game where you do both at the same time. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Wheelie Breakers for the Wii. Let's talk about it. Today's video is brought to you by a regular partner, ExpressVPN, the simple, secure, and top-rated VPN service. ExpressVPN helps you protect your private information from external companies and services by masking your IP and connecting to a private network. An invaluable service with so many of us working on computers from home every day. As I've talked about in the past, ExpressVPN can also help expand your entertainment library with existing streaming services by changing your country to a network that you connect to. A big show I've been catching up on lately is the beautiful and surprisingly dark Star Trek Discovery, which has a new season coming later this year. Normally, I'd have to subscribe to a new video service to stream it in the US or Canada, but you can immediately stream it with Netflix internationally by changing your region to one of the dozens of other countries that ExpressVPN provides. If you're interested in trying these features for yourself, you can get an additional three months free with our exclusive link at expressvpn.com slash thejwits. As always, it's great to work with the company that I use in my own home, so thanks again to ExpressVPN for the continued support. So, I'm no stranger to Turbo Duels in Yu-Gi-Oh! games. About a year ago, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links added Turbo Duels, which lets you do special abilities by spending speed counters that you gain over time. Or, more classically, there were the 5D's Nintendo DS games, where they had a little racing minigame that you could do, and some slight rule variations on the actual card game portion. 2009's Wii Li Oh, I get it. Wii... Lee Breakers. <laughs> is the only racing card game I have ever played. It may be the only game in the history of ever to combine the two genres. Now, I just want to get this out of the way. Despite the fancy future cars and F-Zero or Wipeout, this is not. This game has the bare minimum of what is required to call yourself a racing game. There is a go button and a stop button, and that's pretty much it. There's no drifting, which means that the only way to survive a tight turn for most cars is to let your foot off the gas, maybe pump the brakes, and slowly turn. I'm pretty sure it's actually faster to hit the wall, although that's a problem too because the collision physics are all over the place. Sometimes you bounce, sometimes you just get glued to the wall, and then other times you just start Tony Hawking it like you're trying to land the 900 for the first time. These are also some of the blandest tracks I've ever seen in a racing game. The locations are all mostly bland, dark cityscapes, which to be fair is accurate to the 5D's anime, but almost every single track plays the same. No shortcuts, no distinguishing features, no crazy turns or jumps. It's just a lot of modified ovals. Shocking to almost no one, it turns out that the Yu-Gi-Oh! car game is not a good car game. However, I'm gonna be real with you. It's actually kind of a good card game. The closest thing I can compare Wheelie Breakers to is battle racing games. You know how in games like Double Dash or Twisted Metal, the character you pick gets exclusive special power-ups? This game is kind of like that, except you build a deck of 15 to 25 specific power-up cards, and over the course of the race, you can only draw and use the powers that you've assembled in your deck. Oh yeah, and there are over 125 cards to collect and select from. And this is the real spice that Wheelie Breakers has to offer. Tons of iconic monsters, traps, and spells have been translated from the Yu-Gi-Oh card game into this racing game. There's burn damage, healing, traps you drop behind you, speed boosts, all the juicy stuff that you'd expect from a party racing game. The card gameplay asks you to balance three different currencies. Cards, life points, and speed counters. 
With cards, you start with and have a maximum hand size of six. While you're racing, you can cycle through your hand and activate cards at the D-pad, or you can discard one card from your hand if you're maxed out and you want to throw something away. Outside of very few cards with draw effects, the only way to draw new cards to your hand is to hit the card item boxes while racing. There's also no deck reshuffling, so once you're out of cards, you're out of cards for the whole race. Finding the best way to budget your skills and your deck size around a three lap race is the real strategy. Life points work the same way they do in Yu-Gi-Oh for the most part. If you get hit with stuff with no monster in front of you, you'll lose life points. You can summon monsters to protect your life and also launch attacks, but there's a huge variety of ways to damage your opponent with spells and traps as well. Usually when your life points hit zero, your car breaks down, sputters out, and it takes a good while before you can get back in the race. It's basically like waiting for Lakitu to pick you up and drop you off again. It's agonizing. Speed counters are your currency in the top right of the screen. They gain slowly as you drive or fill up to the maximum of 12 when you hit one of these orange balls. Some spells and traps use these to activate, but the main thing you'll use them for is monsters. Each monster has a summon cost and an attack cost. So you're constantly pressed to get more of these and feed the beasts. In general, the strongest monsters cost way more to summon and way more to use in attack. I found that there are great monsters on both sides of the spectrum, from cheap to expensive. The monsters actually look pretty great too. Even though the environments are muddy, the characters are all bright and cell shaded, which works perfectly for anime adaptations. It also doesn't hurt that these days you can rip games to emulators and upscale the game to look better than it ever did on the Wii. But despite the crisp monster visuals, you don't get to see them all that often. There's this summon camera that shows your monster for one second, and then the rest of the time they're cut off over your head so that you can focus on the track. You even have the option to turn this summon camera off, and you might actually want to because it's easy to crash and burn during the one second that you look away from the road. Blue eyes might look great here for one second, but now I've got to spend the rest of the race looking at its crotch. So now that we've got a gist of the real gameplay in Wheelie Breakers, let's talk about the game modes. There's a basic free battle that you can do locally with friends, but the real time you're going to be spending is unlocking the cards in Story and Grand Prix mode. Just like most Yu-Gi-Oh games, you don't get to play as a cool protagonist that you know and love, but instead you're just some blank, faceless avatar. I tried my best to make myself Captain Falcon, but as much as I tried to summon forth another epic F-Zero tier story, instead it's just eight one-on-one -on -one races with the game's main cast. You'll face off against relatable 5D's enemies like Crooked Cop 1, Crooked Cop 2, and... Uh... Thankfully, we also get friendlier challengers like Akiza. Ah! Whoa, you can't show that! This is a children's entertainment product! Think about the permanent damage one line of cleavage might do to a child. It's actually uh, hilarious, but they are still censoring this character in games that she appears in today but I guess she passed the cut in Wheelie Breakers. This here's a lawless road that we all ride. I ended up devising a cheesy deck for story mode. All hail the almighty Sonic Chick. It has the exact same effect that it does in the real game. It can't be destroyed by a monster with over 1900 attack. So when your opponent busts out their strongest monster, you trick them with the chick. The AI won't ever mandatorily replace their own monster, so you can wait the entire race, cycle through your deck, gather all your speed boost cards, and wee Get some every time. You'll duel your way to the end where you battle the main 5G's protagonist, the indomitable junk rider you- <laughs> The junk rider! I know he uses the junk monsters, but junk rider? They couldn't- they, somebody had to think that through. Once you outride the Junk Rider himself, you unlock an alternate story mode with a few new opponents. Then it's time to roll credits for good. And look at that. Last image, Sonic Chick. They knew. There's no way they didn't know. Sonic Chick OP. But unfortunately, not in the Grand Prix. The Grand Prix are, in my opinion, the best part of Wheelie Breakers. Eight racers all simultaneously trying to whoop each other with completely different deck strategies. The Sonic Chick strat is no longer very good because there's a ton of opponents that use monsters below 1900 attack. There's a much bigger incentive to stay in the lead and have first pick at all the stacks of cards to draw. But there's also tons of cards that hit the player when they're in first place, so you might end up getting blue shelled. There's also this absolutely cutthroat new mode that appears in some races, Survival. 
It's like a regular race, but if your life points drop to zero, you don't just spin out. You immediately retire from the race. If you die in the game, you die in real life in the game. Every player not in first place takes a huge life point penalty after every lap, so there's also still that pressing need to go fast and stay in the front while still trying not to die. You can be defensive, you can be aggressive, you can be efficient. There's a ton of freedom for trying out different strategies. One of my favorite decks for this mode was a burn deck, where you hit under your opponent's monsters and shut them down with direct damage. Sparks, one of the worst regular Yu-Gi-Oh cards of all time, is actually good in this game. But then, if Big Fatty Luna steps in with her healing deck and her 9,000 life points, then attacking with monsters is a lot more viable because they last longer and you won't run out of cards. It's a constant puzzle with several different solutions and different viable decks. I don't know if I can fully classify this unholy chimera of a game, but it gives me the same joy that the best card games do. It's fun to experiment with new gimmicks and to slap down cards and see what sticks. And after winning the final cup, I've done it all. I'm the Grand Slam Champion. It's very rough around the edges, but the amount of pure variety and nonsense in this game started to remind me of some of the good times I had playing other arcade racing games. If it had better tracks and slightly better controls, I'd put it right up there with Kirby Air Ride as a cult arcade racing classic worth revisiting. Card games on motorcycles, the video game sounds so stupid. It looks like an absolute mess, and at times it is an absolute mess, but just like the 5D's anime itself, you can't judge a book by its cover. It might have the junk rider, but this ride is not junk.